The ants go marching one quadrillion by one quadrillion. Hurrah, hurrah. <laughs> and you're watching Animal Logic. Homo sapiens have been on the planet for about 200,000 years. On the other hand, scientists estimate ants have been around for about 110 to 130 million years. Sounds more like a human infestation to me. There are over 7 billion people on the planet. A rough guess puts the ant population at 10 quadrillion. That's 10 with 15 zeros. If you added them all together in one big ball, their biomass would be about the same weight as all of us humans combined. Possibly the greatest reason for the ant's success is their ability to function as a collective whole. On their own, each ant does one small, very specific thing, but when they come together, they form a super organism. Kind of like Megazord. The queen's role is to reproduce, often laying thousands of eggs during her reign, the rest of the colony is mainly made of sterile females, who are typically either soldiers, foragers, or caretakers of the queen and her eggs. The males, or drones, only job is to inseminate the queen, and then usually die. All of this is orchestrated by the ants' incredible pheromones, of which they're limited to between 10 and 20 different signals. To give you an idea how strong these messages are, this is a video of a queen being eaten head first by a crab spider. The mating pheromone the queen is giving off is so strong that the male drones swarm over her, continually mating with her even though the situation does not look too promising. It's truly chemistry. The over 14,000 species of ants may have had some common traits, but what is truly amazing are their unique adaptations. The leafcutter ant can carry 50 times its weight, harvesting pieces of leaves to fertilize nourishing fungus. The largest leaf cutters carry the leaves, the medium ones cut them into pieces, and the smallest tend to the fungus inside special agricultural chambers within the anthills. Honeypot ants store food and liquid in their abdomens and can reach the size of grapes. They're like a movable feast. When other ants need nourishment, they rub the bloated ants' antennae and it regurgitates its load for everyone to eat. Yum! The notorious army ant attacks in groups of 100,000 or more, feeding on everything in their path, including bugs, small reptiles, and even on the rare occasion, large vertebrates. They are almost always on the move, having only temporary burrows. Slave-making ants kidnap the eggs and young from other ant colonies and then force them to excavate their nests, find food, and care for their queen. Or sometimes, they just eat them. The fire ants that live in Brazil deal with flooding by creating a living raft. They hook their legs and mouths together and float, carrying the queen safely on top until the flood subsides, sometimes for weeks. Unfortunately, the ant's ability to adapt to its environment is starting to get a little scary as they begin their path to world and Hollywood dominance. The Argentine ants hives are swarming across the planet. They have invaded six continents in the last century establishing themselves in over 15 countries. The main reason for their dominance is that unlike other species of ants, if they come across a foreign colony of Argentine ants, they won't fight them. They will join together and create super colonies. They have claimed land that stretches for 6,000 kilometers across the coast of the Mediterranean, California, and Japan. Sadly, it is often humans that spread the invasive ants, bringing them to places that have no existing ant populations. The yellow crazy ant, most likely brought on board container ships, invaded Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean in the 30s and has never looked back. It now has the highest recorded density of foraging ants with 2,000 per square meter and they are wrecking havoc. The yellow crazy ants have killed between 15 and 20 million of the native red crabs that live on the island. Because guess what? This species of ant can shoot formic acid. Basically, they shoot the acid in the eyes of the crab and blind it. The crabs start frothing at the mouth and then die within a few hours. And the ants eat them from the inside out. The yellow crazy ants have been spreading to other islands as well, where they use similar techniques for attacking their prey. Most notably, invading birds' nests and shooting their acid on the baby birds, burning and deforming them. 
Ants are a fun time. However, the king, or rather the queen, of the invasive ant is the imported red fire ant. In the US alone, the FDA estimates that $5 billion a year is spent fighting the fire ant infestation. These fire ants are far more aggressive than most ant species. They respond to the pheromones of the first ant that attacks, thereafter attacking together in mass, sometimes even against humans. Their sting is extremely painful, with their venom composed of a necrotizing alkaloid. To humans, this means the formation of white pustules, lots of cursing, and a few rare cases of death. To other insects, it almost always means death. There is hope, however. Another crazy ant, this time the raspberry or tawny crazy ant, has developed a chemical defense against the fire ant's venom. In battle, when the fire ant dishes out its lethal sting, this species of crazy ant rises up on its hind legs, secretes its own formic acid onto its abdomen, and spreads it all over its body, counteracting the fire ant's alkaloid. War. War never changes. After many attempts to push back the fire ants by humans, it appears that these raspberry crazy ants are starting to win the war. Time for a celebration? Not really. Although the crazy ants bite is not nearly as bad as the fire ants, they, unlike fire ants, love to come into homes and are very attracted to electrical appliances, often shorting out phones, air conditioners, and other devices. Also, they multiply faster than fire ants and don't respond to the same poisons. The deadly ant invasion is still moving slowly towards us, advancing 300 feet a year. Okay, that's not that fast. We have some time. What animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments, as usual, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thank you for watching.